Now we need to put together the budget constraint that we learned about in the last lesson with indifference in curves and preferences that we learned about before. So suppose what I've drawn here is a budget constraint for a consumer who consumes two commodities X and Y. As you know, the Y-intercept is I divided by PY and the X-intercept is I divided by PX. The affordable set is this area under the budget constraint and, and including the budget constraint, including the straight line. The problem that the consumer faces is to maximize his utility staying within the budget constraint. So the part of the graph that's beyond the budget constraint is totally irrelevant. Within the budget constraint he wants to get to the greatest level of utility, which we're going to model as the highest indifference curve possible. So let's take some fairly standard looking indifference curves, like so. Maybe this is U0, this is U1, this is U2, where U0 is less than U1, which is less than U2. And ignoring everything beyond the budget constraint, just staying within the affordable set, let's see where the consumer wants to go. Now certainly he can go to some point on U0, for instance this point. He could go here, he could go here, he could go here, all those points are in his affordable set. And so he could uh, clearly get indifference level U0. But he can do better than that. He could move to, to this point, and that point would give him a utility level of U1 because it's on the indifference curve, on the, the contour line that corresponds to the level of U1. And this point would also give him a utility level of U1, so would this, so would this. So there are lots of different X and Y pairs, he could choose to give him a utility level of U1. But he can do even better, he can get to U2. Now he can't get to U2 going here, because that's outside of his affordable set. It's beyond the budget constraint, he, he can't get there. As I said, any, any point that's beyond the budget constraint is totally irrelevant. But he can go here, or here, or here. And in all those points, the utility level is U2. So the question is, where is the maximum? What, what uh, pair of X and Y, what point generates the maximum utility, the largest utility? Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to maximize his utility, subject to the budget constraint. And so let's, uh, I th we already know we can get to U2. So the part of the graph that's below the U2 contour line isn't important anymore because we already know he can get the U2. We don't care that he can get the less than U2. We know that he can get the U1 or U0, but we don't care about that because he's not going to go there. But the question is, is, is there some way he can get more than U2? Well, you might have an indifference curve out here, but there's no way he can get to it because all the points on that curve lie outside of the affordable set. Similarly, this is a completely unattainable level of utility. But there are some levels of utility greater than U2 which he, which he can get. That's an indifference curve. Now that's not supposed to, to cross over here. You know, it goes like this. Indifference curves can't cross. And here's another one. Here's another one. Okay, now the one I just drew, this one, that stays totally outside his affordable set, and so that's not relevant. But this one, label U3, he can, he can uh, enjoy that utility level. If he goes here, or he goes here, or he goes here, he can get to that utility level. Now let's look at U4. U4 is even bigger than U3. U4 touches, or it was supposed to touch if I had drawn it quite right, touches the budget constraint just at one point. So he can achieve utility level U4, but he has to go to that one point. Let's call that point A. If he, if he chooses point A, in other words, if he chooses this amount of X and this amount 
of y, then he'll be at point A, and he'll achieve utility level U4. There's no other way to achieve utility level U4, because every other point on U4 is outside of his affordable set. But he can get to U4, and I claim that U4 is the best level of utility he can achieve, because it's higher than U3, it's higher than U2, it's higher than U1, it's higher than U0, it's higher than any other place. And so this is the way we model consumer choice. He has a fixed budget constraint, and he maximizes his utility such to that budget constraint. Now, there's something about the budget constraint which I suppose I should have mentioned before. When we wrote it, income equals expenditure, bxx plus pyy, I've been assuming that pxx and pyy were constants. In other words, they're not affected by anything the consumer does. The consumer can't pick the price of x and he can't pick the price of y. That's why when we solve this equation for y, let me do it again. Let's re abbreviate income by i. Then we have i equals pxx plus pyy. So what we have minus pxx plus i equals pyy. Divide by y, you minus px over pyx plus i divided by py equals y. So we said mx plus b equals y. And the reason I said there was a straight line is because m was a constant and b is a constant. So this is m and this is b. So the, the idea is he can't choose px, he can't choose py, and he can't choose i. Now if he could, well if he could choose income, he'd take the equal, income equal to infinity, so nobody can choose income. With px and py, there are times in the real world where you can influence the price of a commodity you buy. If you go to a store and there's a sign saying, buy two, get one free, then if you only buy one of them, you're going to pay a certain price. If you buy two of them, you actually will get three, and the per unit price is going to be lower. So quantity discounts or quantity surcharges will uh, are, are illustrations of situations where the consumer can actually partially uh, affect the price of a commodity which the consumer buys. So what we're assuming in this chapter, and in fact in most of the of the course, is that you don't have quantity discounts or quantity surcharges. You can't affect px and py. Of course you can't affect i either. And so px, py, and i are taken as given by the consumer. And the assumption that px and py are constants is an assumption that the consumer takes prices as given. which means he can't affect the prices. He just passively sees what the prices are and acts accordingly. There's no bargaining going on. He, he can't go to the sh storekeeper and say, well, if I buy five bananas, will you give me a price discount or anything like that? Another way to phrase this is to say that the consumer is com competitive. So this is an assumption of competitive consumers. Now, competition here means the opposite of what it says in everyday language. Right? It doesn't mean that consumers are competing against each other. It means the opposite. Consumers don't compete against each other. They don't, they don't see any reason to. They just take prices as given. So the word competition means the same as price-taking. And uh, so competition, price taking. Okay. Price taking means that consumers take prices as given. It means that all the prices are constants. Now, at the end of the class, we we will do we'll study some models where you don't have price taking behavior. But for the most part, 
we're going to assume that consumer stake prices is given. And that generates the kinds of graphs that I just drew. Now, if Px and Py weren't constants, it's, it's, um, let's come back over to this part, this part of the screen here. If Px and Py weren't constants, then, then, th th then this graph, th this equation would not be a straight line. I mean, you could write it in the form, you know, y equals mx plus b, but m wouldn't be a constant and b wouldn't be a constant. And if those things are not constants but variables, that is, they're functions of x, then this is not a straight line. It's some kind of curve. And then the budget constraint is not a straight line. It's a curve. Now, the basic principles that I've talked about earlier in this lesson would still apply. You'd, the consumer still wants to maximize utility subject to his budget constraint. But in this case, uh, the, the graph would look different because the budget constraint wouldn't be a straight line. It'd be some kind of curve. Now, he'd still ignore everything outside of the affordable set, and within the affordable set, try to get to the highest indifference curve he could reach. So, so that would still be true. But the graph would be more complicated because the budget constraint wasn't a straight line.